Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. We're going to look at an end game position today which is a little bit of a departure from the more dynamic middle game positions we've considered far but accurate calculation in end games is something we need to practice as well and because of their m static features and they tend to be more concrete in nature and often the, the win or loss comes down to a single tempo in the ending and this is very common in um, pawn races where both sides are rushing to queen first. In this particular example uh, exact calculation is required and, and there's quite a few lines to study so I'll get try to get into this as quickly as possible. Um, let's just evaluate the position. You can see that black has a very dangerous passed pawn and he's just two moves from queening and it's also supported by his very actively placed king. So white is in a little bit of trouble and he's in danger of losing this game if he does not find the most accurate continuation. Um, there's a number of static features in this position and we can see that these pawns on the H file and the F file are kind of locked up currently uh, blockading each other's progress. Um, we can also see that a try, one particular try, such as trading off the white rook for the B pawn, would not be sufficient because black would still be left with this B pawn uh, on the seventh rank, and due to the very actively placed black king white would be powerless to defend the resultant position and would lose. So white has to find something else. If you'd like to try to go ahead and solve it for yourself, please pause the video and do so. I'm going to start looking at some of the key variations. Um, when I'm analyzing a position like this, you know, often it's just really a process of elimination. You know, I, I start out with, with what I think is you know the most likely try. So the first one I looked at here was rook g7 and the basic premise here is that I'm targeting these pawns on the b-file. First I'm going to capture the pawn on b7 and then when this b-pawn on b, currently on b3 queens I'll, I, will, I would trade off and then evaluate the resultant position. Well it turns out that this is nothing more than a draw so after b2 Rook takes b7, b1 queening, rook takes b1 check, king takes b1. After king g2 and king to c2, black takes the opposition, and because of his much more actively posted king, this is an easy win for black. And just to show you quickly, something like this would occur. King f3, king d3, taking direct opposition. King to f2, king e4, king g3, king e3, and now the white pawn is going to fall and it's going to be an easy win for black. So I discounted this line. I also looked at rook g6 but this is too slow because simply b2 rook takes h6 b1 queening and black has a one position. So I quickly discounted this idea. An interesting try and one that has some uh, very intriguing variations is rook g8. Now the idea of rook g8 is that we're going to be able to give black some annoying checks along the a and c file and potentially forcing him to move in front of his own pawn impeding his progress. Now if white is able to shuffle his king over to, to participate in the attack against these pawns that would be a win. But it turns out that this isn't anything better than a draw. So after b2, rook a8 check, king to b1, rook a5 taking up a more active position and putting some threats against some of the static weaknesses in black's position. After king c2 though, white, sorry, black is preparing b1 queening, so white is forced to play rook c5 check. And after king b3, there's some very interesting lines. Really the the only way to continue and guarantee not losing is rook b5 check where we end up um, with 
more, more or less just a repetition of moves, and neither side can make any progress. An interesting try, and worth pointing out, is rook takes f5 check. And if black is hasty here and tries b1, queening, then rook b5 wins because after after because of the skewer. So after the skewer, the king moves to c2, say, and then rook takes, king takes, and f5 is winning. However, this would be quite hasty on black's part, so instead of playing b1 queen, he just needs to play a patient waiting move, and that's king c4. And now he's taken away this important b5 square, and there's nothing he can do now to prevent the advance and promotion of this b-pawn, so white would be lost in this position. So now that we've looked at all of these lines, let's consider the winning line, and it's quite a surprising move if you didn't see it. It's rook to g5. Um, so let's look at some of the key lines. So black has two choices. He can either ignore the offered sacrifice of the rook on g5, or by playing immediately b3, or he can try h takes g6, where uh, white is left with a dangerous um, pass pawn on the h file. So let's first look at h takes. So h takes g5, h6, h7, b1, queening. So notice that black is not queening with check, and that's important, because white now can deliver check, uh, check with his newly promoted queen along this long diagonal. And now there's a forced win. Black has two choices here. He's got king a2 or queen b2, and both lose. So king a2, then queen a8 check, king b2, queen takes b7 check, another skewer on the b-file. And now when the king sidesteps, we take, retake, and now f takes g is winning, because this pawn is going to queen in just a few more moves, and it's going to be very easy for white to blockade the F pawn here. If instead of moving the king we to a2, if, if, if black tries queen b2 check, um, it's more or less the same result. In fact, it's even easier for white. So queen takes b2, king takes b2, and f takes g5. So let's look at black's other try. Instead of capturing on g5, he just pushes the pawn. And this looks quite scary, but it also wins for white due to some uh, tactics in the position. And the, res and the position of this king means that he's subject to a check on f5. So rook takes f5, b1, sorry, b1 queening, rook a5 check, king b2, Rook b5, again the skewer on the b-file, king to c2, rook takes b1, king takes b1, and now f5 is an, again an easy win for white. So I thought this was a very interesting um, endgame study and a good opportunity to practice tactics and calculation training.